Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here, and in this tutorial I'm going to cover how to create this text from sand effect. Or we could also do a text to sand effect if you'd like to go the other way. Let me show you how to set this up. I'll make another text from sand composition. I'm going to work at 1280 by 720, and it's important to remember our composition settings when we set this up. Because once we create our form layer, we're going to need to use those settings uh, for our base form. So before we get there, let's create our solid for form. Make sure it's the size of the composition, and the color doesn't matter because we're just going to apply trap code form. Now, in the base form, we want to make the particles mimic the composition, one particle for each pixel in the composition. So I need to set the size and particle count independently. So the size is 1280 by 720 and the size in Z will set to one because we're only gonna make it one particle deep. Now, the number of particles is also gonna be 1280 by 720 and one set of particles in Z. So like I said, we've got a one for one representation of our composition, one particle per pixel in the comp. Now, you might wanna cheat the size of the particle up just a little bit because the size of the particle is one pixel, but with anti-aliasing and all that, we actually see a little bit of semi-transparency. And there's a couple workarounds for this. I usually just pump the size up just a little bit to 1.3. So I need something to use as a source. So I'm going to drag this tag composition in here. It's just some After Effects type. Like I said, this could be a Photoshop document, Illustrator file, logo, doesn't really matter. It just has to be something that we want to form from particles. It's also a good idea to create a camera. My next step is to define the RGBA values from the, the type layer. So I'm going to go in my layer maps, color and alpha, pick that type layer as my source, and map the RGB and alpha channels from the source to TrapCode form. So if you've got a logo with colors, it'll pull all the logo colors in there. Now, the last thing I need to do in this step is select the map over function. Form is a three-dimensional particle system. Our source is a two-dimensional layer in After Effects, so we're mapping two dimensions to three dimensions. So we have to tell Form which two dimensions to use. I'm just going to use X and Y, which is basically up and down. Now we see our source layer being represented in particles. So if I go to something like Disperse and Twist, I can randomize the positions of all these particles, and you'll see that they will all randomize, which is pretty cool. I can go into the fractal field and affect things like size, opacity, or displacement, which moves the particles in a given direction. But what it's doing, instead of randomly moving them, the fractal field is moving them in a fractal noise pattern. So if I use this displace here, let's set this to something like 250, you'll start to see more of an organic shape rather than the randomness that we saw with disperse. So disperse is random, fractal field is a fractal noise in three dimensions. And they work well together. Now what we can do is go into the quick map section and twirl open map number one. Let me give this a little bit more room to work with here. So this is essentially a map. You can even think of this like a gradient. This could be white here and this could be black and this could be gray in the middle. We've got basically a single dimension map that we can use to control effects. So these are the effects that I can control with quick maps. So I can apply this to something like that disperse that we were doing. So if I use disperse strength, I can have more disperse on one side and less on the other. So if I set this to map over the X axis, you can see I've got more disperse on one side and less on the other. I can do this again with map number two fractal strength over the x-axis and select that same preset right here. And you can see that more on one side, less on the other. It doesn't go all the way to zero because remember we set this whole grid up to be the size of the composition. So if I were to go into my type layer and move this all the way to the edge, we'll see that at the very edge, we are actually back to zero displacement and zero uh, disbursement. But in this case, we want to actually keep our text centered. So from here, it's just a matter of varying this over time or varying this over the X axis. So if we could somehow take these maps and animate the strength of them up and down, 
we can achieve that effect that we were going for. And that's exactly what the map offsets do. You can more or less think of it like a strength factor. 100 leaves the map exactly as you see it. If I bring it down to zero, it's going to take this whole map and shift the value down. The whole graph will shift it down. And if I move it above, it will shift the whole value sets up. So this maxes out at 200. So if I set this to 200, this will basically max out all the values. And I can either animate these two maps independently, or I can just connect them with an expression. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to Option or Alt click on map number two and pick whip map number one. So now all I have to do is animate this from 200 down to zero. There we go. Hit U to show our keyframes. Now it's actually going right to left. It's doing exactly what we told it. Left, uh, left side is more, right side is less. So if I want this to go the other way, I can just simply click on the flip button and this will flip the other way. Now we're still seeing the particles at the very beginning. If we want to fade these in over the X axis, we have a third quick map available to us. And one of the parameters in here is opacity. Now what we want to do with this is actually have it mapped in the opposite direction as our other two values. Because we want these fading on as these values increase. So I'll map this opacity over X. And I'm just going to animate this manually for the time being, but I'll also show you the expression version. So you want these to animate uh, inverted from each other. When this is 200, map 1 and map 2, we want map 3 to be 0. So I'll set a keyframe for that, hit K to jump to my next keyframe, and then when these are at zero, I want this opacity map to be at 200. Now I mentioned the expression version, so we don't have to animate anything manually. Let me go in here, hit UU, show my modified values, and go to map number three. And I can click on the stopwatch, option click, create the expression, pick whip either one of these. I just need to grab one of these values. So I'll, uh, I'll select map number two. And what I need to do is have 200 subtract that value. So when this is at 200, this is at zero, and this is at 140, this is at 60, et cetera, et cetera. This is 70, that's 130. So they basically animate uh, inverted. Now to finish this up, because we've got a camera here and uh, form works well with the After Effects camera in terms of depth of field and all that kind of stuff. Maybe I'll do a quick move through these particles as it forms. So I'm just going to park this at a spot where I can see a good number of particles and move the camera into this particle field. Right here. Actually looks like we've got depth of field on. Let me tr open up my camera options here. And uh, Let's give it a really high aperture kind of look. So I'll set this aperture to 100 and I drag this keyframe all the way back to the beginning. And perhaps I'll even rotate this, em uh, uh, I almost called it an emitter. Our uh, trap code form has no emitters. I'm going to move the base form. So I'm going to rotate that a little bit and have it kind of rotate into position. So let me jump to that ending keyframe here. Set a keyframe for the Y rotation at zero degrees, which is what we want. And let's rotate this 60 degrees and have that ease in at the end. Make sure to have that rotation ease in at the end so that the camera, let's set this to maybe negative 150. That's looking a little bit fuzzy because I think that type is just a touch out of focus. So let's pull that focus distance down maybe around 1200. This is all guesswork because there's really no way to do this outside of using expressions. I just know from experience that this should be right around 1200.
there you go. Now if you want to reverse this, the only thing you need to do is take that one set of keyframes. In fact, I'll make these both ease in and ease out. This will come in and then fade away. So because I linked these all with expressions, all I have to do is change the one set of keyframes and then it dissolves away. Very simple. So I'm not jumping into nested compositions and flipping keyframes around in multiple compositions. I just got one set of keyframes and it's all driven from there, which I think is pretty awesome. So my name's Harry Frank for Red Giant. Thanks so much for watching.